everyone, and welcome to another episode of Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name, because we cannot do this life on our own. We need Jesus and we need his word. And we are in a new series called Bettering Women from God's Word. And we are talking about finances today with my friend, Angela Lane. She's the executive mortgage loan originator at Southeast Mortgage, and she's the branch manager of the Pensacola office. So, hey, Angela. Hey, sweetheart. So good to hear your voice, and I'm very excited to participate oh, with you today. Absolutely. Well, my, um, my watch Siri just went off when I did your introduction, and she's like, hello, right back at you. So she's ready to get involved in this conversation <laughs> as well. But Um, thank you so much for your time. It really is truly an honor to have you on this podcast because your wisdom is so great when it comes to a lot of things, but especially our finances and the way that I know you, well, I know you from being in the Pensacola community first and then with your husband, Brent working at the biggest country radio station in the whole wide world. No, I mean, they do win a lot. (laughs) They're world famous. Let's just put it that way with cat country 98, seven, but I do know you from doing a class with you and your husband with Dave Ramsey. It was at a local church and there my husband and I went and learned not only how to talk about our finances together, but how to do our finances together. And I think a lot of people who are listening to this podcast right now are questioning, how do I look at my finances and know what to do with them? And then on top of that, if you're married, if you're living with someone, how do I talk about this with my significant other? How do I manage all of this? Because it's so important. And in God's word, we're supposed to be good with our stewards, good stewards of our finances. So thank you. So yes, much. that's correct. Because it's all his. We, we are just stewards of his money. And, and it is hard oftentimes to be on the same page as a couple. Um, right. We know we're supposed to be, but Oftentimes it's uncomfortable. And the number one reason for divorce in our country is money fights. Really? Um, Yes. Yes. So you would think, you know, taking the stress out of our financial lives would be so beneficial um, for for our marriages, for our families, for our children. So yes, anything we can do to, to better our financial situation just improves our lives all the way down the road. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Well, and that's, that's interesting about the number one reason for divorce is money. And when I hear that, it breaks my heart because money is a gift from God. You know, we work hard for it. um, We get money and now we're supposed to be good stewards with it. So One question that I have that comes to mind is what has God shown you in your finances? Like, where did this all begin with the seriousness for you? Like, okay, I've got to learn how to manage this. Well, let, uh, I'll take you first to scripture and, um, you know, in Hebrews, uh, 12, 11, it states that no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful Hmm. later on. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So it's, it's hard to make changes. It is, it is hard to divert from what you think is right. But if you have the discipline to change the life of your family, you got to do it. Okay. You, you've got to take those steps. Um, because it's, it's all about what comes later. And you might be in a storm now, but you're getting, you, you want to get to what's on the other side of that storm. Yes. Um, and for women, remember, you are, if, if you have little ones, they're watching you. Mm. They're absolutely watching you. Um, and they're going to catch, you know, re- more is caught than taught. So if you are operating and using biblical principles for managing your money, your kids are catching it, whether you know it or not. You know, right. they're watching you use, use coupons. They're watching mom and dad do a budget um, together and planning for that future. So um, 
getting on the right financial path is beneficial for everyone. You're changing your family tree. You're improving your marriage. Um, you're getting to the point where later in life, um, you can not only live like no one else, but you can give like no one else. Right. And that is my favorite lesson each semester when we do Dave Ramsey is what happens later once you do have your finances in order. But, um, but yeah, it takes some steps and it definitely takes some work and it takes being uncomfortable for a little bit um, to make those changes. But back to Hebrews, um, it, it'll give you peace. That's good. That's good. And that is from Jesus. That's great. And I want to go back to the part where you were talking about being uncomfortable and that season where you're doing the work, where you're doing the hard work is what I should say. So where does that discipline start? It's simply put, it, it, it's a plan. Um, a lot of young couples, you know, come together and they get married and you know, he's earning and she's earning and they're not really paying attention to where their money is going. They're not being deliberate. Okay. Um, so, so a plan is, is the building block and that plan is with a budget. And, um, many people think that that's just a dirty word. <laughs> people don't, don't want to do a budget. They don't want to be constrained and, um, be told what they can and can't do with a budget, but a budget actually, if it's, if it's adequately put together is absolutely freeing Yes, um, because you're starting off your month and you know exactly what you have and where it's going to go and you can adjust accordingly so that you make sure that, that your priorities are, are cared for, but you're also going to work into their date nights and, and birthday parties and anniversary gifts and things like that as well. And the most important part of having a budget is you're not out spending money without a plan. You know, right. once you get disciplined with this, you're not just arbitrarily going to run into JCPenney because they're having a sale and go spend $175 at their summer clearance sale unless you've built that into your budget. Right. And, and that's, that's the, the basis of all of this is you've got to have a plan. You've got to have that budget and that budget will be absolutely freeing because you're going to see what you've got, where it goes and what's left over and what can be done with it. Right. So that's, that's first is, okay. is making a budget. You need to have an emergency fund established. Um, as I'm a loan officer, I have so many people uh, reach out and they want to examine and look into home ownership, but they don't have a savings, let alone any funds to fall back on in case of emergency. Okay. So that is what Dave Ramsey wants you to begin with. Baby step number one is to put a thousand dollars in the bank, which sounds like a lot, but that having that thousand dollars sitting there to assist you should anything arise is going to help you keep your budget. So for example, there's so many things that come up, you know, a, a car, um, you know, you can have a car breakdown, you can have a medical issue, things happen. And if you have that money set aside, you're going to go ahead and use the funds for that emergency rather than going and putting it on a credit card. Right. And then taking months and months and months to pay it off. You've already got that set aside. That's what it's there is to take care of that little emergency. So you take care of it that way. Yes. So establishing funds that are there to help you in times of crisis, because it will come up. <laughs> it absolutely yeah. will. We, we have, we all have something each week that, that shows up and it's in our lives unexpectedly, but being able to, to have the plan to take care of that is, um, is so much of it. And what a moment of harvest in your weakness to say, Hey, 
my car broke down or my AC just went out and it cost a thousand dollars. What a moment of harvest in your weakness to say, thank you, Jesus. I have this money saved aside. This is not a problem for me. This is not a problem for my family. I am not putting a dent into our bills, into our finances for this month or the next month, but I will need to rebuild that emergency fund. Thank God it's there. You know, like that, that's just how this thing works. It's a plan that has to be worked out. You know, it has to have legs. It, ha it It's not just a plan that sits there. It's a plan that you make, that you do. And then you have to do the hard work to keep that plan in place, you know? Absolutely. Well, well, think, I mean, so many of those things that would come up would go back to having a money fight, an issue between, you know, a husband and wife, because all of a sudden, you know, there's this big financial alligator in the room, you know, whether mm -hmm. it be an alternator or a broken arm that has to be dealt with. And if you know, you've got the money set there, there's no fight that's going to occur. Right. You both are going to look at each other and you're going to go, Hey, we're going to be okay. We've saved for this. Yes. Oh, what a rewarding conversation to have with your spouse about money. <laughs> and that's what we want. Angela and I want for you all who are listening, we want healthy conversations about money because it is possible. It is tangible. God does give us money. Like we do have money. It's a thing in the universe that we do that we work for. We're supposed to work as Christians. Okay. We're not supposed to be sitting on the couch. We're supposed to be working if you're willing and able. Okay. So God does want us to use our, our money wisely. And these are the things that you can do today with your spouse or just by yourself. We had on Angela, we had on a guest a couple episodes back. Her name is Mignon Francois and she owns a cupcake shop in Nashville, Tennessee, and then another one in New Orleans. And she shared her story that she only had 15 cents and she sat there and prayed and prayed and the Lord just gave her wisdom about what to do in this. And, um, she started with the Dave Ramsey plan and now she has a multi-million dollar company thriving. And, um, I mean, I know she's going through some stuff right now with COVID, but still like the Lord has prepared her, you know, <laughs> that's amazing. It's amazing. Like this stuff actually works. And so if you're listening right now, this, wisdom that Angela is telling us and we're, we're still going, we're still going. I think we're just bridging into the next point that you're going to talk about, but this stuff works. So I don't want to hold you back. We've already talked about two different points about one, make a budget and two, make an emergency fund, putting away a thousand dollars as quickly as possible. So what's next? Yes. And, and to get that thousand dollars, I mean, it may seem, may seem daunting, especially, you know, right now, if you're having some financial trouble, you may, you may wonder how to make a thousand dollars up here. But um, think of it this way. If, if you had a, a sick child who needed a vaccine that was a thousand dollars, you'd do whatever you had to do to raise those funds. Yes. You would have a garage sale. You would sell extra exercise equipment that's gaining dust in your home. Right. So there's, there's definitely things you can do to put that thousand dollars away and, and provide you that peace of mind going forward. Um, one of the greatest tools that I feel is for a budget is doing a weekly shopping list for your okay. family. I think it's so important, much like a, a budget is a plan, a shopping list is a plan for your budget because it's going to help you stay on track. Um, and this is something that when Brent and I first went through Financial Peace University, at our church. It's what made the biggest initial impact because I never made a shopping list. I, I never really thought about it. I just would go to the store when things got low and you just go up and down all the aisles and I'd fill my cart with whatever I thought everybody liked or needed or, or wanted. Right. And um, by me taking the time to go through the weekly ad and looking at only sale items okay. and then taking another step to maybe try to find coupons I might use. So I was really trying to get the benefit of every single dollar that I was going to let go at that grocery store. Okay. I was going to get the most for my money. So, um, what I chose to do is I focused, um, I, I shop here at our local grocery store, uh, Publix, right. and I focus on their buy one, get ones in their ad each week. 
Okay. By doing this, it gave me the ability to load up my pantry with staples when they were at the price point that I wanted. So if I know, uh, let me just choose, uh, for example, Kraft macaroni and cheese. Say that I know that that's something that, that my children at the time would eat on a real regular basis. I would okay. only purchase it when it was buy one, get one free. Otherwise, it didn't go on my list. Okay. And I, when it was buy one, get one free, I made um, a point to get, say, six of them. So I had enough for a couple weeks worth until it would be buy one, get one again. So that's, that's just one example. But, but it works for, for so many items, um, tuna and you know, other just staples that you purchase when they are at their best price because they're not going to go bad. They're going to be in your cupboards. They're going to be in your pantries and they're going to be there when you need them to make those meals for, for your family. Um, but I would go through that ad. I would take down all of the BOGOs. I would get my coupons. And what we did is we went from spending $1,200 a month for our groceries for a family of five to spending 600 a month for a wow. family of five. Just 50%. completely. Yes. Just just cut that budget right in half. Well, it wasn't a budget before. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a poor choice of words. I was just grabbing stuff off aisles, but um, having a list and sticking to it and buying items when they're at the price I want to get them is huge. And I really don't, I don't waver from it. You know, our, um, our son can tell me he wants a particular kind of cereal. And okay. I will look him straight in the eye and say, next time it's on sale. Like I, I'm not going to grab it at a regular price because That's at good. some point it'll, it'll be at a better price. Right. Yes. Oh, I love that you're standing firm in that because it's so true as parents, you want to, oh, my son or daughter likes this item. Well, that's great, but you know, they're not going to starve and we can get them something else until that item goes on sale because I am trying to be a good steward of my finances. You know, I mean, you know, like that is, that's really cool. And two, I just looked up online Publix. I'm sure they have this for other grocery stores. Publix is a huge staple down here in the South. We do have people who listen um, all over the U S but Publix we're shopping is a pleasure. Okay. Uh, they are a staple <laughs> down here. And so they have online what the buy one, get one free deals are. So I'm sure, did you, or how do you do yours? Is it through a newspaper or do you do yours online? How do you look at your buy one, get one deals? Well, um, it used to be because, you know, we'd get the written, um, at the paper, we get the newspaper with the, with the insert from the grocery store. What in, is that? In, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, so I would sit down and I would go page by page and make my list um, in two columns, one with all the items that were BOGO, and then a second with the things that we just had to have anyway, like milk or butter or, you know, something that might not necessarily be buy one, get one free. Like milk never goes buy one, get one free or eggs, but okay. you still have to have them. You're still going to buy them. There's still going to be items that you, you do need to buy and you need to buy at regular price, but. Uh, now I signed up for um, our grocery store online and they now email me the weekly ad. And each oh, week I you. also get a $5 coupon, $5 to use off of a 30 day, or excuse me, a $30 bill. What? So this, gives, this helps then it helps me save additional money for those items that I do have to buy that aren't on sale. Interesting. Okay. I didn't realize that they would have mailing lists, but okay. So you, you, is this at Publix? You signed up for their mailing list and this is what you're getting? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good to know. I didn't know that. It is. All it right. is. And, and a lot of other wonderful grocery stores out there have rewards programs and, you know, where perhaps you hit a certain dollar amount of shopping. And so then they, they are going to give you say, three or five dollars off your next shopping trip or something. But, but that's, um, you know, it's important to, to, to look through the ads and to have your list and compare the, the grocery stores that you have available to you and right. what they might have. Oh, that's so good, Angela. That's so good because someone who is listening to this 
who is wanting to make a change and willing to make a change is going to take this information and make a change. And this could be huge. I mean, this could be huge, not only for the short, the short term, but like you were saying for the long term for the harvest. So yeah, I don't want to, I know you have some other things that you want to talk about. So what else do you, uh, what do you have on your mind with this finances and how to manage our money? We, we live in a society. Um, I get, I guess probably the other thing I, I, I really want to caution everybody about, um, and especially this sounds weird coming from a lender, <laughs> but, um, you know, debt, debt is not a tool. Um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make you wealthy by using debt. It, it makes the banks wealthy. They're the ones that ultimately receive the benefit for you using credit. You know, there's no way to, to, to work a system and, and work a deal. Um, cash is really the best use of your money. Um, and getting, getting into using debt, um, payday loans or, you know, doing 90 days, same as cash, things such as those um, ultimately can put you in trouble. You know, for example, say that, um, say that someone went out and bought a house full of new furniture um, on a 90 days, same as cash before we hit this COVID crisis. And guess what? It, it's about to hit and they're about to ha start having payments and interest and all that. Mm. That wasn't their plan. There wasn't their intent. They thought they were going to use the money for free and then wipe that debt out. But guess what? Now they can't because maybe the husband is laid off and the wife's hours have been reduced. Oh. And so now, you know, they're going to have all that interest that they didn't think they would. So, um, that it, it's, Debt is obviously good from, from my perspective, right? Because I'm, I'm helping someone finance a home, right? But, Which is totally different. Totally yes. different. Yes. Because like, everybody huge. needs a home yes. and home ownership over renting is beneficial. Boy, we could have a whole podcast outside of this on why it's so good to have your own home. Oh, yes. Uh, and I'm down but, for that because home ownership, <laughs> there are so many things about it that just give you confidence, give your, it gives your kids confidence. It's, it's just one of those things when you shut the door, like I am home, baby, you know, like this is our place. So uh, may it be a service to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So but yes, but the small going. term debt, you know, Right. financing cars and, and using credit cards in lieu of debit cards, you know, trying right. to extend what you're making by using credit. Um, it ultimately just causes, causes problems. Right. And I think the big thing that you were talking about, I really just want to bring it home is that when you buy a house, that's not at all, and this is exactly what you were saying, that's not at all comparable to credit card debt that you would get buying a sofa or furniture, yeah, sofa or furniture. You know what I'm saying? Like that, those are two totally different things. What if I need to build up my credit? Like how can I, how can I do, you know, can you explain that? I'm sure you get this question a lot teaching Dave Ramsey. What do you tell people about credit cards and building someone's credit. Um, just, can you walk us through that? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Yes. Yeah. I'm, and I'm I phrasing can. that terribly, but yeah, you know no, no, saying. no. And kind of quick, quickly to just sort of cut to the chase of it all. Um, a lot of what's important in building your credit is the types of credit that you have on your report. And if you are going and getting those little quickie payday loans and you're going to like a little finance company, um, those are viewed um, through the algorithms as almost almost as if you have a problem, okay? Um, because they're seeing it as financially, you're needing to go and get those type of loans in order to make ends meet. Okay. Whereas if you go to your local bank or credit union and you take out a visa, um, and perhaps you use that. For something that you buy regularly, um, like your your gas weekly, um, 
So you're buying it for your gas and then you are, because it's through your bank or your credit union, you're moving the money right back from your checking account, right back over to that credit card. Okay. So the algorithms are picking up that you're using credit, but you're not abusing it. You're not, you're not gaining a balance. Um, it's very important that you not exceed 30% of your high balance. So if you go get a $500 visa, $500 limit on a visa at your local credit union, you want to make sure that you don't carry more than $150 balance. Okay. That something like that is a fantastic tool. And that's what I tell a lot of parents who, um, perhaps they've, they've got, um, children who are just out of high school or just graduating college and, and they know they're going to, you know, have their first, you know, big job and they want them to establish credits so that they can purchase a home. Good. This is a really good tool to use it but not abuse it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Do you know of a website or anywhere where people can go to get more information on just education for what you just said? Um, well, you know, I always refer, I always refer to Dave Ramsey. I really okay. do. Um, he's, he's brilliant. So, <laughs> right. um, he, he obviously has the financial peace university course. Um, so you can go to his website, you can sign up for that. They're doing it virtually now. So no one has to really even have any contact with anyone. You can do it in the, in your own home and learn so many tips and benefits to his program. Um, also he wrote a book, um, the total money makeover. Yes. Oh my gosh. Fabulous, yes. fabulous book. And right um, now people are reading like crazy. So total money makeover, y'all put it on your list. <laughs> Things mm -hmm. to read. Yes. So I, I would say that those are, those are fantastic tools for helping anyone listening to this kind of do a deeper dive and, um, and pin this down for, for their situation. Also, I mean, Dave Ramsey's on the radio. Um, right. He is, he's on local radio. He does a radio show every week and it is crazy inspiring um and on fridays it is it is full of people i don't they're probably not doing it live but it, they'll have people call in and they do the debt-free scream and there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing like having a husband and wife come together on a call and talk about what god has done for them in, yes. in a period of time to help them come together and wipe out that debt and, and allow them to then live like no one else. Exactly. So, and then the greatest thing about it is, oh my goodness, you know, they say it's better to give than to receive. Then you can bless other people. It feels so good. It feels so good. There's nothing like hearing of a story of, you know, maybe someone, and boy, I bet you there are countless stories, um, given, you know, the storm that we're in right now with, with the COVID crisis. But, you know, when you hear of, of a single mom who's, mm -hmm. who's struggling, um, yes. with, with her car or with her light bill or something, and there's nothing like being able to anonymously just bless her. Yes. Oh, let's do more of that, you guys. Let's be a community. Let's be Christians who walk by faith and like do good works. Like do that. Let's let's bless people when they see like we see that they need it. Let's just let's just bless them. But in order to do that, we have to be good with our finances. And that is why we're having this conversation with Angela and in this series of bettering women from God's word. It is good, like a Proverbs 31 woman, to know where your finances are and know where they're at from doing the work and the labor that you're doing. So I think something that I want, I would love um, for people to take away from this is when Angela, you kept saying, you know where it is, you have control of it. It's one of those things where we might not have a lot of control in our lives, but the money that's coming in, we do have control of that. And so now we want to be wise in that. And so I have learned so much from this today. Angela, is there anything else that you would like to mention? Uh, well, I absolutely appreciate the time. Um, as you can tell, I'm a little bit, I'm so passionate about it. Um, yes. You know, just coming together with my husband, 
Um, it was, gosh, more than more than a decade ago. It might have been about 12 years ago now. Um, it, it just changes things so much to know that we're on the same page and that we have a plan and we are working together on a goal. And um, I just, I can't say enough to en encourage anyone listening that you can do it too. You really, really can. I was the one when this, when my husband proposed Financial Peace University, I was the one who, who said, no way, uh -uh. I'm not having anybody tell me what to do with my money. Right. And here I am today. And I will tell you, it has been the biggest blessing for our marriage and for our children and for our future. For, I love that. Those three things for our marriage, for our children who they are watching, like you said, they're watching you and for our future. And so you said this happened 12 years ago. So you're still, that's the thing about just watching people in their lives is when they're still doing it years later, you know, they're putting their money where their mouth is, especially in this sense. So um, if you're still yes. saying this 12 years later, mm -hmm. that's awesome. I, I, I am. It was not a fab. It was not something that we took lightly. It was not just a little blip on our radar. Um, it changed our lives forever and, and, and our children. And I'm telling you, I mean, we now have two adult children and they, they spend wisely. They are out of college without student loans. They own their cars free and yes. clear. That's Our amazing. oldest daughter and her husband um, purchased their home on a 15-year fixed rate. Um, awesome. You know, they're, everything is getting done as it should be, and and it's because they watched us go through this. You know, it's it's unbelievable to have a teenage daughter in high school who needs to she needs makeup, and she's coming to you saying, "Hey, what do you got for coupons this week?" Oh, you know, that's so that, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, actually, I, I hope that happens with our family. That's good. <laughs> well, too, I wanted to ask you, I always ask our guests this, is what scripture has been helping you in this season? The scripture that comes to mind that always seems to come to mind, it, and it, it came to mind immediately when I received a, uh, a, a not a very good medical diagnosis a few years ago, but immediately placed upon my heart. And whenever I feel that things are just a little tough, um, is Philippians 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm. Like that is just, it is my, my anthem. I just, I, I hear it and I feel it. And I just, I know that he is on my side and he's got me. Yes. Yes. He's got you. And for Angela, do you want to share a little bit about where you're at with your health journey? Um, just to encourage someone else out there, if there's, uh, I mean, you know, you don't have to share everything, but like if there's anything that you would want to share with our guests. Well, I guess, you know, I, I just realized I didn't even really talk about the benefit. Um, well, to, to go back um, at the end of 2016, I received a diagnosis of breast cancer mm. and at the time, you know, it, it just, it comes at you so fast and you, boy, so many decisions and so many doctor's appointments, you're seeing surgeons and oncologists and it's, it's nuts, but I, I've, I've come through that. I guess I should, I'll, First go and tell you that I'm, I'm fine. I had yes. a double mastectomy and I've gone through um, reconstruction and I, I take a daily inhibitor um, that I'll take for five to 10 years. But okay. aside from that, I am, I, I am healed and I am doing amazingly well. Yes. But going Great back God. to the financial part of this, I, I didn't even think to mention in talking about how my husband um, and our children and our lives were on track. If we had not gone through Dave Ramsey, getting that diagnosis of cancer, mm -hmm. I, cancer, that, I mean, a double mastectomy and many surgeries to follow. And we're financially fine because we had taken all the steps to make everything right first. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, that, that was God. That was God yes. leading us all those years ago to take the steps to come together, to grab each other's hand 
and get on the same page and fix our finances. Wow. How long ago was it that you said you found out you had breast cancer? It was November of 2016. Wow. So 12 years ago, God was planting the seed. Oh, oh yes. My goodness. Yep. Yes. Angela, that is beautiful. <laughs> In times when we are so weak, God is strong. Like that is what that story says because something like cancer, I can't imagine. I mean, I haven't been through it, um, but just hearing other people's stories of what that's like and all the emotions that go into that, the last thing I would think you would want to need to think about are your finances. Wow. And, and, and we didn't, we didn't have to, and that was really amazing. Um, I, I remember vividly taking the phone call from the doctor's office after I'd had my, just, it was just a routine annual mammogram mm -hmm. and, you know, they were calling to tell me that they, they needed me to come back in that based upon the mammogram, they needed to do some further screenings. And as I sat and, and the nurse was making, you know, arrangements, you know, trying to find that appointment, she could put me in as soon as possible it was laid on my heart at that very moment. I had 100% peace and I knew that God was going to use me. That's I wasn't scared. I didn't cry. I, I knew it would be okay. Wow. What a testimony. Oh, Angela, this has been <laughs> so good. Okay. I am sure like there are so many, I could keep this conversation going, but I do definitely want people, if they want to connect with you, how can they connect with you, Angela? What's the best way to reach out Instagram or whatever is best for you? Um, many different ways. Yes. I'm on Instagram as Angela Lane. Um, I have Facebook uh, okay. again, Angela Lane, my, um, Number is 850-776-6094. They would find that online as well because I use it for, um, for my business as well. Right. And my email is Angela.Lane at SoutheastMortgage.com. That's so good. And you do have the voice of an angel and your name is Angela. <laughs> I love it. The first time I met you, I was like, no way. I mean, your name is Angela. You have the voice of an angel and your oh, husband you're... works in radio. I mean, Come on. That's just like the coolest thing to me. So anyway, you're awesome. I appreciate your time. I know people who are ready. They've been taking notes and they're ready to make a change and they're praying about it and they're going to have a meeting with their spouse about it and we're going to better women from God's word. Oh, I love it because this is, God wants goodness for us. And so that excites me. Uh, one of yes, those he does. And they can do it. They yes. can do it. I promise. Yes. We're your cheerleaders. Okay. So Angela, I love you. Thank you so much for your time. And I always pray at the end of our podcast in Jesus name, I pray we decrease and God increases in our lives. Amen. Amen. To connect with Angela, you can go on Instagram and follow her at Mrs. Cat 987. That's M R S cat C A T nine eight seven. And you can follow Angela and connect with her. She also left her cell phone number and her email. So feel free to connect. And then when we talked about Dave Ramsey, he has a monthly planner online and I have the link to that below. So it's a PDF. What you're going to want to do is open up the PDF, print it out, pray about it, sit down with your spouse, or if you're sitting down with yourself and write down those monthly expenses. We're going to get into all of the dollars and cents. Another thing that Angela was mentioning is control of your money. So this is big with Dave Ramsey. He wants you to value a dollar. So in each spot, try to make it as close to whatever that cost is as possible. This is really encouraging. It's great. It's hard, um, but it's good. And so in this document, if you've never done one of these before, you're going to see the fruit of your labor. You're going to see where you're putting your dollars. So I hope this is something that encourages you, that inspires you, that makes some awesome moves in your life to get you closer to God, closer to Jesus, closer with your relationship, walking daily with the Lord. So 
Get that PDF download. It's right below in the description of this podcast. Next week, we are continuing on with bettering women from God's word. And we are talking with my friend who is an athletic trainer, Allie Hill. And we are going to be working out for the kingdom of God, okay? So it is important to keep our bodies in shape because this is our body. Our body is a temple from the Lord and we are going to serve him through that with what we eat and with what we do with our bodies. Oh goodness. So uh, let's hang on tight for this one. Allie Hill next week. Get excited. Y'all have a great week. Thanks for listening.